30 years ago, against all odds, a remarkable engineering feat of the 20th century came to fruition. The completion of the $15 billion undersea megatunnel connecting two of the world's most vital cities. Spanning 50 kilometers beneath the ocean's depths, this colossal endeavor engaged 1,300 workers and demanded six years of tireless construction, with its roots tracing back centuries. The monumental project teetered on the brink of breaking two nations, and there were grave concerns that it might remain an unfinished dream. This is the incredible story of the Channel Tunnel, often hailed as the seventh wonder of the modern world. The Channel Tunnel is an essential piece of infrastructure that many of us tend to overlook. Traveling from London to Paris is as simple as making your way to St. Pancras Station, boarding the train and finding yourself in the heart of Paris in just two hours, assuming everything runs smoothly. Despite occasional strikes and recent flooding, this tunnel has faithfully linked the UK and France for numerous decades. However, its significance extends beyond connecting London to Paris. It serves as a gateway to the entire European rail network. Furthermore, it has revolutionized freight transportation, making the movement of goods from the UK to Europe more efficient than ever. The journey wasn't always this effortless. Before the tunnel's construction, traveling from London to Europe meant navigating the turbulent and notoriously unpredictable weather of the English Channel. A process that consumed approximately six to seven hours by rail and ferry to reach Paris. Now, the same journey takes only a third of that time. Astonishingly, more than 20 million people utilize the tunnel each year, surpassing the combined populations of London and Paris. In the realm of finance, it also serves as a lucrative source of income for the company overseeing its operations. Gatlink, in recent times, achieved record-breaking levels of revenue, amassing a staggering 1.4 billion euros during the initial nine months of 2023. The Channel Tunnel, affectionately known as the Channel, made its debut in 1994 after a laborious six-year construction period. During that era, it held the prestigious title of being the world's lengthiest undersea tunnel, a distinction that endures to this day, as it stands as the sole physical link connecting London to mainland Europe. In actuality, the Channel Tunnel comprises two primary tunnels that run parallel to each other, accompanied by a smaller service tunnel measuring 4.8 meters in width situated in between. The service tunnel serves the dual purposes of ventilation and providing access. The two primary tunnels, each boasting a diameter of 7.6 meters, maintain a separation of 30 meters. Remarkably, their height accommodates the passage of a double-decker bus with ease. Every 250 meters along the subterranean expanse, one can spot small ducts positioned between the main tunnels. Their vital function is to dissipate the air pressure ahead of the train reducing aerodynamic drag and enhancing its speed. The Channel Tunnel's total length spans a whopping 50 kilometers, with a significant portion, approximately 38 kilometers, concealed beneath the seabed. Interestingly, these tunnels do not follow a straight trajectory. Instead, they exhibit subtle curves, both vertically and horizontally. This design enables them to remain within the chalk layer that underlies the channel, ensuring their stability. At its deepest point, the tunnel plunges to a depth of 75 meters below sea level. Upon its inauguration in 1994, the American Society of Civil Engineers bestowed upon the channel the esteemed title of one of the seven wonders of the modern world. When one contemplates the sheer magnitude of this engineering marvel, it becomes abundantly clear why it earned such accolades. No other underwater tunnel had ever come close to achieving the monumental feat accomplished by the Channel Tunnel. The long-standing aspiration to bridge the gap between the British Isles and Europe has persisted throughout history. Despite occasional opposition and dissenting votes from the UK, the intrinsic economic and social ties between Great Britain and the continent through trade and human movement remain undeniable. As far back as 1802, blueprints for a tunnel connecting the two land masses had already been drafted. However, in that bygone era, the vision was limited to a tunnel wide enough only to accommodate horse-drawn carriages. Many British citizens harbored the suspicions that this endeavor was a mere pretext for a French invasion, causing the concept to lack widespread support. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, a series of proposals involving bridges and tunnels emerged. In 1974, British construction workers even embarked on the ambitious task of digging their way to France. Regrettably, just one year later, the UK government abruptly terminated the project. 
Thus, the dream of a channel connection was consigned to the annals of history, marking the grave of Europe's most audacious engineering endeavor. It wasn't until the 1980s that French President François Mitterrand and British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher breathed new life into the concept we now recognize as the Channel Tunnel. The backdrop of record unemployment, collapsing industries and widespread civil unrest in the early 1980s rendered both governments financially ill-equipped to undertake this monumental megaproject. Consequently, the solution lay in private financing. Instead of contemplating a series of suspension bridges or causeways, the British and French governments embraced the proposal set forth by the Bulfour Beatty Construction Company, subsequently entrusted to a consortium named Transmanch Link. The blueprint called for the construction of two tunnels, initially estimated to cost $3.5 billion. However, as the project unfolded, its expenses soared, ultimately exceeding $15 billion in today's currency, with some accounts suggesting an even higher figure of $21 billion. Construction efforts commenced in 1988, and the engineering and design teams faced the initial challenge of pinpointing the precise locations for tunnel excavation. A meticulous examination of the seabed geology revealed a substantial layer of chalk at the bottom of the English Channel, beneath which lay a more easily penetrable chalk marl. The excavation process commenced with a service tunnel, providing engineers with valuable insights into ground conditions before embarking on the construction of the primary tunnels. In the year 1988, the tunnel boring machines TBMs, were set into motion, embarking on their monumental mission. Five TBMs diligently dug their way from the French side, while an additional six TBMs were deployed from the UK. The tunnel construction process involved the assembly of cast iron segments, which were securely fastened together, and the utilization of precast concrete rings to line the tunnels after the TBMs had successfully pierced through them. An impressive quantity of chalk was unearthed during the excavation endeavor, systematically transported back through the tunnel using conveyor belts. On the British side, resourceful engineers put this extracted chalk to good use, employing it to construct a platform at the base of the Shakespeare Cliffs near Dover. One of the most challenging aspects of the Channel Tunnel project was the meticulous task of ensuring that both the British and French sides would ultimately converge in the middle. To accomplish this, specialized lasers and surveying equipment were brought into play. Yet, given the sheer magnitude of the project, an air of uncertainty persisted casting doubts on the effectiveness of the technique. By the year 1990, the anticipated convergence of the two sides of the tunnel was approaching. This juncture arrived at a pivotal moment in the construction timeline when many began to harbor concerns that the project might never reach completion. It had been beleaguered by a litany of severe issues related to cost, scheduling and safety. However, in December, a breakthrough occurred as the two sides of the service tunnel finally met and the technique proved its worth. A historic moment ensued when two laborers, one British and one French, extended their hands in a handshake through the newly formed opening, enabling individuals to traverse from Britain to France for the first time in modern history. Subsequently, in 1991, the connection of the two main tunnels marked a significant milestone, and the project entered an intensified phase. This phase encompassed the integration of crossover tunnels, land tunnels connecting the coast to the terminals, piston relief ducts, electrical systems, fireproof doors, and the crucial ventilation system and train tracks. Finally, on December 10, 1993, the inaugural test run traversed the entire expanse of the Channel Tunnel. Then, on May 6, 1994, the route was officially inaugurated. Three decades later, more than 20 million people traverse this extraordinary piece of infrastructure each year. These three tunnels have forged a connection that spans an entire continent, offering a compelling testament to the extraordinary capabilities of construction. This narrative underscores once more the remarkable influence of construction. If you found this video enlightening and desire further insights from the premier video channel dedicated to construction and mega projects, ensure that you are subscribed to Megalux.